What's the matter, guys? Are you not agreeing on where to have lunch? <laughs> anyway, let's go to the museum, which is just here. So, I hope they are gonna let me film, but I won't know until I get in. The beginnings. Storage. I'm going to try to include their labels because I find it difficult to talk here so you can still make heads and tails of what I'm showing you coveted findings they were kind of like the Wedgwoods of the Roman times but I prefer these little glass bits even though as you can see the one in the back has been broken to smithereens and also that oil lamp is really funky <laughs> models of how construction would have happened It's meant to be Emperor Claudius riding an elephant when they invaded in uh, 43 with 50,000 men. Uh, elephants laden with everything. And after about 350 years of Romans, we are moving on to the Anglo Saxon times. Here's some of the brooches they wore. I like the one with garnets. The middle one and the right one. A bronze ball. Spearheads and swords that were in the burial places. Now we have a man wearing those time period clothes and also a woman a replica of a warrior grave and suddenly there is a Victorian lion you ended up in a glass display I'm so sorry and randomly next to it there is a 1,000 kilo German bomb. It's telling us that this unexploded German high explosive bomb was drenched from Dover Harbor and diffused. Okay, still Finn is missing. And it's just randomly placed here. A display about the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. And there are some really happy but very loud kids around. Which you can hear. <laughs> Behind the glass, a living room and nursery that has a lot of animal themed items. It's hard to film with things behind the glass. So in one display I'm reading about how they loved animals and then in another one I see how they liked wearing them. You can see two mink coats and then down here a whole bird taxidermied onto a hat of fascinator. And this room is designed to look like a Victorian explorer's room. Everything from butterflies to crocodiles to whatever you can imagine. 
There's some paintings of animals which are quite nice. A milkmaid with a cow and ducks. Porcelain figurines. And one of kittens and a turtle. And this one is my favorite. <laughs> Look at that fish. Look at it. And oh no, I found a polar bear as well. Can read it and this is the reason I came here this is it to see because it is the eldest seafaring boat that was ever discovered supposedly three and a half thousand years ago when it was made okay it's taking us through the Bronze Age stages of farming exploiting the metal and the Bronze Age house There's a little piggy there. It's just too dark. Oh, and the child sleeping. And ta -da! There it is. They found quite a lot of big chunks. And they presume that it could have been even longer. But the back end of it was already built on. Here's the snippets of info, so you can see it's quite a long and large boat to preserve it. There is a specific temperature inside this and also the lights are dimmed. I don't know how to better try and show it to you. But it is definitely large, much larger than what we would expect from that time period. There is wood to tools trying to show us how the boat was possibly built. There's some good drawings here. And the partial reconstruction of it. Step back. There we go. And a different gallery where I think there's a bit of everything from Napoleonic Wars to World Wars, including that funky plane. That's part of the siege of Dover Castle, which was unsuccessful. Haha. <laughs> but the tunneling that they tried to do, the Frenchies. Okay, a simple model of the castle and grounds. Again, I have filmed there. Go check those videos out. The whole place is just beautiful. And we have a beautiful painting of the area as well. And these are the ceremonial robes of the Baron of Songport in charge of Dover and the area. I like these sailboats. And the portrait of Queen Elizabeth I. That's a nice one. It says the embarkation of King Henry VIII at Dover. Sorry. <laughs> Preparatory to his interview with the French King. François the First. 
Hiker Man's Armor is from the red 50 during the steward times. A baby's cap and a man's night cap. Look at the detail. And just on there, there is a cool little box lock pistol from around the 1830s. <laughs> An example of how they would defend themselves against incoming enemies. And I found another model of a beautiful ship and it's made out of bone. It was actually a French prisoner of war ship. How beautiful. He, uh, even though you served for something gruesome, I'm pretty sure there were not ladido conditions on it. And the Toby jug with the face of Napoleon on it. And from the Battle of Trafalgar, the death of Lord Nelson. And more models of boats which I like all of them I wish they would be real again and we could set up somewhere <laughs> and moving on to Victorian times all sorts of bits and bobs I will create that double decker tram model And the Victorian parlor with all the knickknacks. Don't know how much it shows through. And the model of Dover and area. We have the castle and grounds there. The ferry port. And the white cliffs of Dover up on the top left. And then the Dover Street English Channel. And on this side is the cargo terminal and where the cruise ships come in. And everything is annoying because of the lights and the reflections. First World War, Second World War, another bomb. And I found a very, very funny notice. I'll let you read it and giggle to yourself. <laughs> oh, people. Now, I mentioned before that there is such a thing as the channel swimming where people take on the challenge of swimming from Dover to Calais which is 33 kilometers or 21 miles and here is lots of trophies, trophies that people won and I'll show you some photos It's both men and women who attempted it or have done it like that lady, I'm just reading that from 10 attempts, she succeeded 4. Thing is that the waters here are cold, even in summer. <laughs> it's not like you go swim in the Mediterranean. More of them, more recent ones. And then this lady, she's done it 37 times. Wow, Chloe. Amazing. There's some funny bits. And my favorite is this one. <laughs> I agree with you. And the collection of postcards from Dover. And I think that's it. There were other bits and bobs. I did not show you everything, so there's much more to the museum than what you've seen in this video. Okay, that's that. I am out now. I hope you enjoyed 
uh, the museum tour, or at least bits of it, just like I did. I think some of the organization could be done better, but hey, maybe that's just my opinion. I won't be exploring Dover any further. I'm spending the remainder of my time here, enjoying the views and just wanted to say goodbye to you all. I hope you enjoyed this slower, more chillaxing wandering. And if you want for something more eventful and action packed, then do look out for the castle videos I filmed. There's one of Dill, one of Warmer, and two of Dover Castle. Wishing you all a lovely, lovely day. Ahoy!